This is our view, the television voice of the people who work for you, the proud members of the Washington Federation of State Employees. State workers have negotiated a new contract that now must be approved by the legislature. The better pay and benefits are important, but so is the fact that these improvements will lead to keeping and recruiting quality public employees. Well, I think with the improvements in the language in the contract, recruitment or retention is something we heard at the table quite often from management, quite frankly. Uh, it, it's an issue for them, it's an issue for us. As the economy improves and wages are higher and higher in the private sector, more and more people are going to be leaving state employment because they can get better money somewhere else. The benefits are better somewhere else. Uh, this package offers some improvements in those benefits. It offers areas that do address recruitment and retention, long overdue areas of, of addressing recruitment and retention issues. So yeah, I think it's a good package. It is a good package for the citizenry of this state. It addresses recruitment and retention somewhat. Does it go completely there? No. I mean, we'll see that again in two more years when we go back to the table. We're going to be asking for more issues, that, more articles that, that uh, go after this recruitment retention issue. Because quite frankly, we're still going to be only 25% below the private sector. <laughs> when it comes to our salaries. If a retail clerk asks you repeatedly to apply for the store's credit card, it isn't because the clerk didn't hear you the first time. They are required to ask many times, and their employer judges their work performance on what is called the credit standard. And that's just one of the issues as workers negotiate with one Tacoma employer over a new contract. That credit standard is one that requires Macy's employees to solicit credit cards from the public. And they're required to ask three times during a transaction if a customer wants to open a Macy's credit card. But we have a couple of issues with that credit standard. The first is that the number of credit applications that is required under this proposal is one application must be received for every 30 hours of work. And most people may say that may not be an unreasonable standard. However, in Pierce County, we have roughly 300,000 people to draw those credit apps from. In New York City, where Macy's flagship store is, that credit standard is one application for every 60 hours of work in a population of roughly 8 million. So our members feel that they certainly could achieve that one in 60, but the one in 30 is not a standard that they believe is achievable. And the reason that is important is because they can be terminated if they fail to achieve the credit standard. Fear is a tactic many employers use against their workers who are trying to organize for collective bargaining. It's a tactic common around the world, according to Jim Baker, with the International Labor Office of the United Nations. And while it may discourage workers from organizing, it also discourages quality work. Fear is a very devastating thing because it, it freezes your mind. You're no longer able to reason. Now, what that means is that in the context of organizing, uh, it's difficult for people to even realize their self-interest because they're so, they're so afraid. What it means in terms of the company and what you were just saying in terms of the development of the company, the prosperity of the company, the good functioning of the company, is that they don't get the benefit of the best capacities and possibilities of, the, of, of, of their employees. Because if the employees are only concerned about saying what the boss wants to hear, the boss may not get the messages he needs to hear. And I think people who have a more uh, a policy of, of, industri of human resources, which is essentially an industrial relations policy, where they respect the balance of power, where workers have a certain dignity, you end up getting a lot better ideas, a lot better mix of ideas. You get people who care much more deeply about the company they work for. And, uh, and, 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 you, and you have the possibility of creativity and the rest of it. 
you don't, your brain doesn't function in a way that can be creative and provide ideas if, if you're under so much stress. And one of the most stressful things that can take place is fear. A public utility in France is moving toward private ownership. Employees there are not just watching it happen. They're taking to the streets as they protect their jobs and protect the French rate payers from higher utility bills. Last October, 25,000 people protested all across France against the project of privatization of GDF, the national gas company. In 1945, after World War II, France decided to make water, electricity, gas and transportation a national service, therefore turning all these companies public. Now, in 2006, the French government is planning to privatize GDF, the national gas company, and merging it with the Suez Group, specialized in energies and water. From this, unions all across France gathered to protest the privatization, but also informing the public on the consequences, such as higher prices and services that used to be free will now be charged. For the employees, unions fear layoffs and lower salaries. These candles are a humoristic way to demonstrate today's protest and the privatization of GDF that should remain a public company. We expect our deputies, who represent us in the French Parliament, to do their job and make a reasonable decision. This campaign to alert the public should create a public debate to inform the people on the consequences of the privatization, but also the future of public companies and services in the European Union. This will not just affect Europeans, but also other countries out of the European Union. France's gas reserves are all used up, therefore can't produce and has to buy its gas from Russia and Algeria. If the merger takes place, GDF who already sells its gas to the U.S., plans to triple their prices, which will also affect U.S. consumers. We hope the fusion will not take place. At first, we think personnel will not be affected since current employees will still have the same advantages. But the financial pressure will be much stronger. So it will affect more employment than current salaries. But economical layoffs could happen. Soon the French Congress will decide on the future of JDF, but unions and associations are still worried. Benjamin Marcus, for our views, Paris, France. People attending a recent labor history conference in Olympia heard from a noted Harvard professor that democracy within the labor movement is not enough. To be an effective force in the community, the union needs to make democracy and social justice for everyone a priority. Democracy within unions matters beyond simply voting for leaders. You know, everybody says, we're a democratic organization. Well, you know, give me a break, you know. Uh, uh, simply voting for leaders is not enough to call democracy. In my view, the ideas, values, politics, ideology matters. Social justice unionism is a union, it's not just about voting, it's about what are you there for and is part of your mission the transformation of members, the empowerment of members, not just within the union, hell, I mean, you empower people within the union, if the union's powerless, it doesn't mean anything. It's to empower members to build a powerful union, to have power within society, to break up concentrations of power and to create a more democratic, equitable, just society. That has to be the mission of a labor movement. Otherwise, we might as well take down the shingle, call ourselves an insurance company called Contracts or Us, and we can have a nice little outfit, uh, but we're not a movement. Uh, politics matters for unions. The need to directly engage in politics requires a political program, not just, you know, who is the least evil of a bunch of cruds who are running for office. That's not engaging in politics. It's saying, we believe that these issues, issues of security, issues of peace and justice, is there a more important issue in the entire, what is important to a worker in their livelihood? Well, peace, 
you know, like maintenance of life. Uh, that's really important. A labor movement can't be neutral on issues of war, peace, uh, racism, justice, all of those issues. Y you can't. Uh, and it requires a political program, not just responding to other people's program, but in fact laying out a program, winning people to the program, moving that program through society. Competition among unions can be good. Diversity, in my mind, uh, stimulates innovation. It's not necessarily a problem. Finally, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, but it rocks absolutely too. And we should be interested in rocking uh, things. Here's a look at our union history with Ross Reeder. The Seattle National Association of Letter Carriers was chartered on December 14, 1890. As far as we can tell, the first public employee union in Washington state. The Seattle Letter Carriers organized almost 12 decades ago. That's back around the time that national unions like the miners and the machinists were founded. One of the interesting cultural aspects of the letter carriers is that many of their locals had their own concert or marching bands. I know that the letter carriers in Portland, Oregon had a band. Here's a picture of the 1911 Washington State Association of Letter Carriers Convention delegates and band. It includes members from the Tacoma Post Office Band and the Seattle Letter Carriers Band. This tradition is still carried on, I was recently told. When I attended the Seattle Letter Carriers meeting in the early 1980s, their band was giving a pre-meeting concert. It is often thought that public workers didn't organize much until the 1960s. Well, Council 28 history shows that's not quite right, and letter carrier history takes us back even before the beginning of the last century. You have been watching Our View. Brought to you by the 30,000 proud members of the Washington Federation of State Employees. Thank you for watching and we wish for you a joyous holiday season.